To this now, millions are lost annually to the trade in counterfeit goods in the country. The trade not only causes financial harm, but it also has the potential of becoming a health and safety hazard. Let's unpack this more now with Spur and Fisher's Paul Romara. Paul, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. So, for instance, with health products, right, we have SAPRA. Uh, I'm pretty sure we do have, um, you know, uh, organizations or authorities that look at the food that comes into our country Etc. But are they doing enough? SARS, for instance, looks at the products that come into our country, especially from the airports. Yes, yeah, so we essentially have uh, three government agencies that assist in the fight against counterfeiting. You have uh, customs, uh, you know, falling under uh, South African Revenue Service. You also have the police and also have uh, inspectors. Uh, from the Department of uh, Trade and Industry. And uh, ultimately, uh, customs plays a very, very important role in making sure that uh, goods that come into the country uh, are not counterfeit. Uh, but of course, it is a challenge uh, because uh, customs, or SARS as you call it, is only able to intercept uh, 5 to 10 percent of the containers that comes through. That equates hmm. to about 2,000 to 2,500 containers. And there's a lot of containers that come through, uh, you know, why do as we you are aware. Mm. Why, do, yeah. why are they only able to look at 5 to 10 percent? Is it a staffing issue? I, I think it's a staffing issue, but also it's impossible because not everything that comes through our borders uh, is, is counterfeit. Uh, so and also it's a clandestine uh, operation. Uh, mm. So they they're not able to tell upfront uh, what is in this container. So they can't stop all containers from coming in, into the country. Uh, you know, so so it's only five to ten percent. But yes, uh, I think there is room for improvement. Uh, there could be a lot that could be done in that regard to making sure that we cover as much. So. It's important that they are also well resourced to deal with the uh, effect of, of counterfeit. Mm, and I know that you know we we all know that police have all these uh, operations: Operation uh, Shanela, which is on a national level; Operation Okai Mulao is here in Gauteng, etc. And every time during these operations, we'll hear about billions of counterfeit goods that have been confiscated. But you go back to the same shops. Where, I've covered a story where I saw them take the counterfeit goods out of that shop. But you, I went back to the same shop about two or three days later, and they were operating again with more counterfeit goods. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, ultimately, it's a, it's a supply and demand issue. Uh, and that's really a big problem. Hmm. I have spoken earlier about the role played by customs. Uh, and, of course, I've said they look at goods coming into the country. And they are unable to deal with everything that comes into the country and for that reason the police play a very important role and uh, that's why they conduct raids uh, to make sure that they take these goods off the shelf. Uh, the most important thing is uh, we need a multi-government agency pronged approach uh, where all agencies work together including the judiciary because ultimately when these goods are seized uh, criminal cases are open against this uh, infringers or suspects, and the case has to be processed through the, you know, our court. And uh, although we have very stringent measures to deal with counterfeit or stringent penalties, uh, matters sometimes do not proceed to trial for, for many reasons. Mm. All right. So, you know, I mean, you say it's supply and demand and that's another issue, etc., uh, which obviously is quite a big issue in South Africa. Is this a ph phenomenon uh, special only to us? Because the way it looks to South Africa, no. it looks like this country is a huge playground. No, I, it, it's mm. a kind of a thing is a global problem. Uh, uh, you know, I've just returned from a trip uh, from Nigeria and also Gambia, where I... In Nigeria, I met with the government agencies, and uh, the main purpose of the trip was also to to meet with the uh, government enforcement agencies uh, in the Lagos uh, 
area to sensitize them and to uh, teach them uh, on how to identify counterfeit goods from original ones. Obviously, I was there on instructions from uh, certain clients, but it is a global uh, phenomenon. I, my practice of fighting counterfeiting, it basically is across Africa. You know, I do this kind of work in Kenya, Tanzania, uh, you know, Uganda, Zambia, you know, Botswana, and Namibia. So it's a really a global phenomenon, accounting to between five to seven percent of the global trade. Uh, mm. so it's but, really our, mm, but our counterfeit goods are uh, basically growing bigger than the original like for instance you walk into a store uh, you know i'll make a uh, i'll make an example maravastat and you find a lot of um you know products that are ordinarily very expensive at the real creators of those products um is the black market growing much more faster now well it, i i think we we have a problem i wouldn't mm. say that uh, mm -hmm. it bigger than the original but we we do have cause for concern uh, you know as i said earlier it's a supply and demand issue and for as long as there is also a demand from the consumers they they the manufacturer mm. all right Okay, Richard, it looks like we're, Paul, I mean, it looks like we've lost your audio uh, at the moment. Um, uh, we're not hearing you anymore, but thank you so much for helping us. I mean, I wanted to still discuss the fact that, for instance, when it comes to, uh, you know, counterfeits, uh, there's also a concern from many South Africans now that there's food that makes it uh, into our shores that is not supposed to be here, probably not good for human consumption as well. Spur and Fisher's Paul Ramara, who is speaking to us. Okay, Paul, I see uh, you're back. Um, the team is telling me that your audio is better uh, you know I was I wanted to speak to you about the food part of it I mean that's even more dangerous you know that that's not uh, something very small government needs to take that part very seriously and I know that uh, trade and industry is one partner as well as the Department of Fisheries they are a huge partner in making sure that at least uh, counterfeit goods in the form of food doesn't make it onto our shores because then we'll find more situations like we saw in Naledi and Soweto where young children uh, you know babies Babies dying uh, from eating snacks. Absolutely, I think more needs to be done in that regard. The Consumer Good Council also needs to come into the party and play a very important role. The inspectorate, uh, you know, uh, also needs to come in and make sure that uh, food are inspected. Uh, you know, we we need better coordination, even up to the level of the judiciary to make sure that these cases are processed uh, as uh, quickly as possible. Uh, because obviously when it comes to goods uh, that we consume, uh, including medicine, uh, because that's also another mm, exactly. uh, thing that worries a lot. Uh, fortunately, in South Africa, it's a little bit, bit more protected, but I do see uh, instances of uh, counterfeit medicines across Africa. All right, Paul, thank you so much for your time here on ENCA Spur and Fishers. Paul Ramara speaking to us there.